Welcome to my YouTube channel, Nurse Blessing. Today we look into female reproductive system questions and answer. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Question number one Which of the following describe the tubes that propel the ova from the ovaries to the uterus? A. Pelvis B. Fallopian tubes C. Cervix D. Uterus Answer number 1, B. Fallopian tube is a muscular tubes, oviducts, lying near the ovaries and connected to the uterus. Each eggs pass from the ovaries, through the fallopian tubes, to the uterus. In the female reproductive tract, there is one ovary and one fallopian tube on each side of the uterus. Question number 2 A true type of female pelvic should consist of which of the following? A. Diagonal diameter, anterior and posterior diameter B. Pelvic inlet, pelvic outlet, pelvic diagonal C. Pelvic inlet, mid pelvis, and pelvic outlet D. True conjugate, diagonal and false conjugate. Answer number 2. C. The female bony pelvic is divided into two true pelvic and false pelvic. The true pelvic lie below the pelvic brim and related to the childbirth. It is composed of inlet, cavity, and the outlet. Question number three, surrounds, cushions, and protects the fetus and allows for fetal movement is known as A. Placenta B. Umbilical cord C. Corian D. Amniotic fluid Answer number 3, D. Amniotic fluid is the protective liquid contained by the amniotic sac. The fluid serves as a cushion for the growing fetus, also facilitate the exchange of nutrients, water, biochemical product between mother and fetus. Question number 4, which purposes of placental functioning should the nurse include in a prenatal class? Select all that apply. A. It cushions and protects the bab B. It maintains the temperature of the baby C. It prevents all antibodies and viruses from passing to the baby. D. It provides an exchange of nutrients and waste products between the mother and developing fetus. Answer number 4. D. The placenta provides an exchange of oxygen, nutrients, and waste products between the mother and the fetus. The amniotic fluid surrounds, cushions, and protects the fetus and maintains the body temperature of the fetus. Nutrients, medications, antibodies, and viruses can pass through the placenta. Question number 5 Nurse Sherry is educating a group of women on umbilical cord. Which statement made by one of the women need further teaching? A. The vein carries oxygenated blood and provides oxygen and nutrients to the fetus. B. The arteries carry deoxygenated blood and waste products from the fetus. C. It contains two arteries and one vein. D. It contains two veins and one artery. Answer number 5. D. The umbilical cord is a tube that connects you to your baby during pregnancy. It has three blood vessels, one vein that carries food and oxygen for the placenta to your baby and two arteries that carry waste from your baby back to the placenta. Question number 6. The most favorable type of pelvic that lead to successful labor and birth is A. Platypeloid B. Gynecoid C. Android D. Anthropoid Answer number 6, B. The gynecoid pelvis is thought to be most favorable pelvis types for a vaginal birth. This is because the wide, open shape give the baby plenty of room during delivery. Question number 7, inner layer of the uterus is called? A. Endomerium B. Vas deferens C. Myometrium D. Proliferative layer. Answer number 7, A. Endometrium is the inner layer of the uterus.
Question number 8. The following are the internal organ of the female reproductive system? A. Vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tube, rectum B. Cervix, uterus, fallopian tube, ovaries C. Vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tube, ovaries D. Uterus, bladder, vagina, appendix. Answer number 8, C. The internal genital organs form a pathway called the genital tract. This pathway consists of the following, vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tube, ovaries. Question number 9, the clitoris is analogous in the male to the A. Gland penis B. Scrotum C. Foreskin D. Testicle Answer number 9, a clitoris of female and glands of penis are homologous slash analogous structure. Question number 10, the pudenda is another term for a internal gent eels b vagina c external genitals d uterus. Answer number 10. C. The term pudendum is used to describe external genitalia regardless of sex, the labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, penis, scrotum, testes, and so on are all parts of human pudenda. Question number 11. The mucous membrane which partially occludes the opening of the vagina is A. Hymen B. Labia majora C. Cervix D. Clitoris Answer number 11, a hymen is a thin of tissue located at the opening of the vagina. Question number 12, the nursing instructor asks a nursing student to explain the characteristics of the amniotic fluid. The student responds correctly by explaining which is characteristics of amniotic fluid. Select all that apply. A. Prevents large particles such as bacteria from passing to the fetus B. Surrounds, cushions, and protects the fetus C. Can be used to measure fetal liver function D. Maintains the body temperature of the fetus. Answer number 12. A. B. D. The amniotic fluid surrounds, cushions, and protects the fetus. It allows the fetus to move freely and maintains the body temperature of the fetus. In addition, the amniotic fluid contains urine from the fetus and can be used to assess fetal kidney function. The placenta prevents large particles such as bacteria from passing to the fetus and provides an exchange of nutrients and waste products between the mother and the fetus. Question number 13, which of the following ligaments anchors the ovary to the body wall of the uterus? Select 1, A. Broad ligament. B. Round ligament C. Ovarian ligament D. Suspensory ligament. Answer number 13, D. Ligaments are short mass of tough, fibrous connective tissues which binds two bones or joints together. They also binds two cartilages together. In the ovary, they fix the its mass to the pelvic wall. Suspension Therefore the suspensory ligament is a connective tissues that linked, joined, connects the ovary to the wall of the pelvis. Question number 14. Successful fertilization of the egg normally occurs in the a. Ampulla of the uterine tube B. Ampulla of the ovarian tube C. Ovaries D. Uterus Answer number 14, A. Fertilization occurs in the ampulla of the fallopian, uterine, tube when sperm and ovum unite. Question number 15 during menstruation, a portion of the endometrial lining is shed. Which of the following layers of the endometrium is involved in the shedding process? 
A stratum basalis B, stratum epidermalis C, stratum functionalis D, stratum broad. Answer number 15, C. The endometrium is functionally subdivided into two layers. The stratum functionalis is a thick superficial layer that is sloughed off during menstruation and grows anew during each cycle. It is therefore a temporary tissue with an unfinished appearance not quite as tidily organized as mucosal tissues in most other organs. The stroma more closely resembles embryonic mesenchyme. Then typical lamina propria. The stratum basalis consists of permanent stromal tissue and deep ends of the uterine glands. These tissues remain through each cycle and serve as sources for cells during regrowth of the superficial stratum functionalis. Question number 16, a clinical nurse eduator is teaching about the vagina, which of the following are true about the vagina except? A. Muscular tube B. It extend from the cervix to the vaginal opening in the perineum C. Known as the birth canal D. Cavity from which menstruation occurs. Answer number 16. D. Muscular tube that extends from the cervix to the vaginal opening in the perineum known as the birth canal passageway for menstrual blood flow, for penis for intercourse, and for the fetus. Question number 17, which of the following is not not favorable for labor and vaginal birth? A. Platypeloid B. Android C. Anthropoid D. Gynecoid. Answer number 17, B. Android pelvic is a heart-shaped or angulated, resembles a male pelvis not favorable for labor and vaginal birth. Narrow pelvic planes can cause slow descent and mid-pelvic arrest. Question number 18 The development of the corpus luteum occurs during which phase of the cycle? A menstrual cycle B, uterine cycle C, ovarian cycle D, secretory phase. Answer number 18, C luteal phase of the ovarian cycle begins with ovulation. Body temperature decreases and then increases by 0.5F to 1F around the time of ovulation. Corpus luteum is formed from follicle cells that remain in the ovary after ovulation. Corpus luteum secretes estrogen and progesterone during the remaining 14 days of the cycle. Corpus luteum degenerates if the ovum is not fertilized, and secretion of estrogen and progesterone declines. Question number 19 Corpus luteum is the source of secretion of A. Estradiol B. Progesterone C. Luteinizing hormone D. Estrogen Answer number 19, B. The primary function of the corpus luteum is secretion of progesterone for maintenance of pregnancy. Question number 20, After ovulation the graphene follicle becomes an endocrine organ called A. Corpus luteum B. Colony C. Globulin D. Ovarian gland Answer number 20, A. Corpus luteum is formed from follicle cells that remain in the ovary after ovulation. Question number 21, If after ovulation, Pregnancy does not take place, then the corpus luteum A. Becomes active and secretes a lot of LH and FSH B. Is maintained in the presence of progesterone C. Produces a lot of oxytocin D. Degenerate in a short time Answer number 21, D. Corpus luteum degenerates if the ovum is not fertilized and secretion of estrogen and progesterone declines. Question number 22, after fertilization, 
the zygote increases in size and travel down the fallopian tube to become emid in the wall of the womb, this process is known as a menstruation b ovulation c implantation d conception. Answer number 22, C. Implantation is a process that occurs after an embryo, fertilized egg, travels down the fallopian tube and burrows deep into the lining of the uterus, where it will remain until delivery. Question number 24, this occurs on the days 1 to 5 of the menstrual cycle? A. The lining of the uterus builds up B. The lining of the uterus remains in place in pre-partion for the possible arrival of an early embryo. C. An egg is released from the ovaries D. Shedding of the lining of the uterus. Answer number 24. D. Menstrual phase begins on the first day of menstruation and lasts till the fifth day of the menstrual cycle. The following events occur during this phase, the uterus sheds its inner lining of soft tissue and blood vessels which exits the body from the vagina in the form of menstrual fluid. Blood loss of 10 ml to 80 ml is considered normal. Question number 25 which of the following is not a function of the female reproductive system? A. To take care of the developing baby during pregnancy B. To excrete water C. To give birth to the baby D. To produce egg Answer number 25, B. All are function of the female reproductive system except the excretion of water. Question number 26, another name for the neck of the uterus is called? A. The womb B. Fallopian tube C. Cervix D. Vagina Answer number 26, C. The cervix is the lower part of the womb, uterus, that joins to the top of the vagina. It is sometimes called the neck of the womb. Question number 27, the ovaries are suspended by A. Ligaments B. Fallopane tube C. Ovarian wall D. Mesovarium Answer number 27, D. The ovaries are located one on each side of the lower abdomen, near the kidney of its side. It is suspended from the dorsal body wall by a mesentery called mesovarium. Question number 28, the last part of the oviduct is called? A. Isthmus B. Ampulla C. Ostium D. Thalamus Answer number 28, A. Three part of the fallopian tube are, the isthmus, ampulla, and the infundibulum. The last part of the oviduct, isthmus has a narrow lumen, short and thick walled and it join the uterus. Thank you for watching please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Nurse Blessing.